Hey, this is Lula, and this is the series where we look at the most expensive house for sale in each state. Today we are in Maryland, a state that I mostly know from the TV show The Wire. So I'm going to assume that all of the excessive wealth that we witness here is, uh, is directly directly fueled by uh, con contributions to the, the public health crisis of heroin addiction and, and opioid addiction in general. Uh, we've got an almost $20 million uh, four bed, eight bath house and uh, i did i did take a peek to make sure this wasn't one of those compounds that has multiple properties so we've got a main house and a guest house but it is all a single property and there's additional bedrooms in the guest house so it's actually a little more than four bedrooms still that's that is a high price tag uh for for relatively little living space considering uh, but that is, that has been what we've been seeing on the East Coast. The East Coast is is expensive, and uh, the aristocracy there is pretty well established. It's that that blue blood bullshit. Uh, we can see we've got a, a sea seaside property. Um, I hope it is under the ocean pretty soon. But uh, it looks like they've got the seawall they're building up to to hold that off. And uh, let's let's see what all of that opioid money is getting us. Jacuzzi and pool with a covered seating area and plenty, plenty of seating here. As far as the landscaping goes, obviously swaths and swaths of monoculture grass. It looks like, I think I saw from above that this is a golf course. Uh, we can at least comfort ourselves in that this is not a, a drought stricken area by any stretch of the imagination the stretches of open grass and the perfectly manicured hedges and all of this it's just it's giving a, a certain blue blood aristocracy je ne sais quoi like uh, it's it's alice in wonderland the the red queen you know all right, we've got a an odd little arc of chairs staring at we don't know what. Uh, I assume this is where they have uh, peasants come and perform for their amusement. And until I see otherwise, that is going to remain my assumption. All right, we've got the nice long dock here. I don't know that this seawall is actually gonna gonna protect them from the rising sea levels. I think they need to, to put some more rocks on that personally. We've got a second arc of chairs here facing, I mean, at least it's facing the ocean. That makes sense. Uh, but they, they do seem to love this formation. Here's the golf course. Do you think rich people ever actually worry about being rich people cliches? Or do they just kind of like chuckle about it and be like, oh, I'm such, I'm such a, a rich people cliche. Or are they like actually leaning into it? Or are they just oblivious? Are they oblivious to how repulsive they are? What is this? It's like a little section of turf separated from the... Oh, I, I bet this is for like bocce ball or croquet or, or some bullshit like that. The, the, the wealthy do love their lawn games. It's, it's very uh, colonial chic. I do like this Navigator Star here. I, I like little insets and details like that. And it looks like we've got, I, I assume this covered walkway leads from the main house to the guest house. I like how it divides up the yard. It's, it's architecturally interesting. Uh, obviously it's convenient if you've got a covered space to walk between the buildings if the weather is not so great. Um, all right, I'm, I'm a fan of this. I'm a fan of the walkway. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. And it is connecting the two. Um, I don't know how I feel about these overhangs here. I Maybe it's just that they're like striped. And I, I guess if you see these in a cartoon, they are this, this striped kind. It just seems a little incongruous to me to see it on a house of this caliber. I, I associate those with like the windows on, on trailers. You know, they always have those. Maybe these people are 
are so out of touch with, with trailer culture that they don't know that they have trailer architecture on their house. We got a, a fountain here, kind of an underwhelming fountain, I guess, for a $20 million house. I've, I've said this in other, in other videos. For $20 million, there should be a statue. There should be a statue in the fountain. I think that's the least you could do. Uh, we got a row of rocking chairs up here. What is with the long lines of chairs? How many people live here? How many people are actually sitting together? This is giving Cracker Barrel. You know, the rocking chairs on the front of the Cracker Barrel. That's what I'm getting here. Yeah, that's... This is fully Cracker Barrel chic. Between that and those overhangs on the window, they are they are accidentally careening into uh, rural white trash culture. Is that is that appropriation? Is that appropriate? You know what? I think I think it might be. I think it might be. We got to walk way through some of the greenery. I think that's the that is that. Yeah, those are the covers there. So we we've got a nice long path. Through the property, it looks like this might be a marshy area, which is why we've got the pier there. Uh, it's it's beautiful landscape. I, I don't know much about the specific ecology of Baltimore as compared to the, the rest of the eastern seaboard, but it looks well maintained. More, more chairs. So those, those chairs in an arc were not around a fire pit unless there's a second one. Uh, this is the fire pit area. I I gotta wonder how often they actually fill all of these chairs, or do they have this many so that people can sit, they can, you know, socially distance, but they're not doing it for COVID reasons. They're doing it for uh, weird emotional intimacy reasons. This is maybe the, the driveway coming up to the house. It looks like we've got some fenced in area. Maybe for horses? Do they do horses in Maryland? Here's the boat. Oh, Jesus, you got enough jet skis? Okay, between the, the long lines of chairs, you need enough chairs for everyone at every single sitting space. And now we've got... Uh, how many jet skis? Is that six jet skis? I... Uh, is this a motorcycle club? Everyone has to participate in every activity together. There's only four bedrooms in the main house. Here's the garage. The garage is enormous. There's, I'm assuming there's a, a workshop or an apartment or something above it. Uh, this, I think, is the guest house. Oh, someone's got a little convertible. Um, and then that's the walkway to the main house. Uh, oh, there's a second garage on the guest house. It's it's curious to me that the garage would be so far from the main house. That seems a little inconvenient unless there is yet a, a third garage on the main house, uh, which we have not seen yet. That would be upsetting to me if that were the case. Natural spaces. Looks like we got some inland waterways separate from the ocean. Uh, I'm, I'm wonder if those are freshwater or salt. I, as, I assume they have to be at least a little bit uh, salinated just from the proximity to the ocean and you know the you get a bad storm and it's gonna blow some seawater in here. And we got some canoeing oh and kayaking or whatever that you know oh that's some fun outdoor activities. We got we got active outdoorsmen here. Okay, here's here's a third garage. I don't know what this is for. It's not near the main house. Uh, so there may yet be a fourth garage, but there's this one. It looks like we've got some machinery around here. This this might be like a, a property maintenance warehouse where staff keeps uh, all of the tools to maintain the, the property. I think I see some gardens over here we might have some some greenhouses or uh fresh fresh vegetable gardens over there okay we are in a ch what is with wealthy people and cramming children all into one bedroom what is with that it does not build character it builds animosity between you know what this is why they do it this is why they do it because narcissistic or abusive parents 
They want their children to hate each other because the greatest threat to their power over the family is if the children decide to unionize. So you put them in a room all together where they have to listen to each other breathe and snore and fart all night and then they hate each other and then they never get together and gang up on you. I do like that the beds are boats. Um, the the lifesaver pillows, I think these are like gas gauge or some sort of boat dial. Um, having that on every bed might be a little much. You're leaning into the theme a little, a little hard there. Um, at least you've got, you've got some bright colors. I, I hope the kids actually like the ocean. Can you imagine being the one child in this room that just like fucking hates boats and the ocean and you have to sleep in the boat ocean room with your stupid siblings every night? Ugh. I hope one of them pulls a Lizzie board and I really do. This is an odd little picture. I guess it's showing us an entranceway maybe. We got a balcony. This looks like a sitting room. This looks like an island to the kitchen. Weird picture of a liminal space for them to show us. And they've just zoomed in on the liminal space. Okay. All of these pictures are so strange. What are you trying to show us? There, the, there is a rhyme and a reason to why you take pictures of a house in a certain way. And it's to give people a sense of the space. And this picture does not give me a sense of the space. This looks like a serving hallway. Like maybe there's a kitchen behind or in front and then a dining room on the other side. So this is for food preparation, drink preparation, uh, and, and maybe dishwashing afterward. It's for taking, taking meals in and out of the dining room. And we got a bedroom. The arrangement of these pictures is interesting. They all appear to be pictures of marble or stone statues, which is... It's a strange theme, and it's a strong theme. Uh, I don't know what is with the theming in this house. Every room does not need to be themed. That's that's given me some strong, like, first time playing The Sims vibes, where, where you want to get everything matchy-matchy and, and on a theme. That's, that's not actually how you want to live your life in a house on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, this is outside the guest house. Uh, we've only got a few rocking chairs at the guest house, so you. but don't worry if you just walk a few feet this way. There's plenty of rocking chairs for you at the big house. We got portholes here in case you were gonna forget that you're on the ocean. We have to pretend that we're on a boat at all times. Uh, and if, if that porthole doesn't work for you, you could just go climb into one of those children's beds. Oh, this is so much. This is just truly a lot. I need to take a closer look at this. The fake flowers just covering the bedposts and the frame around it. This, this is the sort of decoration that people do for like a wedding. And you're like, that's a little much. They could have toned it down at a wedding, at an event. And someone is just sleeping under this 24-7. We've got a pillow here that says you're an angel and some doves. Are those doves on this statue here? This is aggressively gendered. You know what? I feel like this is this is the bedroom of a, a young lady that started to show some, some tomboy tendencies. So her parents were like, everything has to be pink. Just make everything pink. It'll fix her striped pink on the walls and the pink oriental carpet the pink on on the dust ruffle down here on the curtains that's so much that is way too much and we've got a kid <gasps> i see a pasta arm oh my mood has improved because we have a pasta arm it is it is a monotasking thing but it's so lovely i love that it's you know, three whole feet away from the actual sink, but that's that's okay. Carrying pots to the sink is for peasants, and we are not peasants. We have a pasta arm. We will fill our bowls at the stove. Get a, 
a cookbook open here so we know that they actually cook. We got two sinks because the space is so huge that uh, having a single sink, there's just geographically no no reasonable place to put it. Uh, it I think that's a TV over by the sitting area there, but we'll have to wait and see. I do like the uh, the painted detail. I can't quite see what it is um, on on this. It looks like the in, entire vent here is wood, and then this is also wood, but it's painted. I that's nice detail. I actually do like the color in here, the yellow color theory wise, and I I don't try to get too strict about color theory, but, but yellow is one of those colors that increases appetite, supposedly, so it is a good kitchen color. And I think that the this medium dark wood complements it and, and breaks it up pretty nicely. I like these details, uh, the woodwork details here. I'm, I'm all about ornamentation. Uh, a friend of mine who does interior design recently told me that, you know, once things start to age, all that's left is beauty. Uh, so, so you don't want to have things be too stark or too minimalist or simplistic. Uh, the, the ornamentation is what's going to bring, uh, bring a style through the ages. Is that a fucking chicken with a chef hat on it? That's incredible absolutely incredible we got another view of this pasta arm we can see a little more detail on this hood here it looks like a floral pattern it's it's nice and so it's not loud you can I, I i don't know that we could see it very well here but you don't need to it's it's just a little something extra for the space they've moved the cookbook over here as if we didn't just look at that other picture and we know. And then of course we've got fake plants up on top of the cabinets here because those exist just to collect dust like crazy. Uh, we do have the refrigerator through here. It's not hidden as far as I can see. It looks like it's it's metal. So they didn't get the memo about about hiding that. All right, we've got a little inset in the wall here that you really have to carefully measure whatever piece of furniture goes in there. And it looks like we've got a microwave and a toaster oven set into this piece of furniture. That has to be, so this has to be like built-in cabinetry. But the fact that it's cut into the wall like this is very strange especially that it's it's clearly a cubby because you've got the wall coming down here i feel like if you had just lifted the ceiling here gone all the way up to the ceiling it would look a little less claustrophobic because right now it just looks like a china hutch that happens to fit really well in here and then for some reason you put a toaster and a microwave in a china hutch um it's it's a weird it's a weird situation for me Oh, and here's, here's our friend, the rooster. Uh, I think he's carrying a bottle of wine. I love him. Just look at him. That is MVP. We've, we've talked about the fact that sometimes these kitchens are just so large that the, the kitchen island is lost in the sea of the kitchen and you need the, the sandbar out here, which is where you put the stools. But they have stools at the kitchen island too which is obnoxious because then it's in the way like there's a whole traffic pattern going on around here so to have it at both uh doesn't work for me what's more is you've got this tv here which i've i've said in the past that i, I actually like the idea of having a tv in the kitchen because you spend a lot of time doing like mindless tasks in the kitchen chopping vegetables and stirring and all of that but the way that it's placed is not convenient for, like, unless you're standing at this counter specifically way off to the side, away from the sinks, um, and, and you're doing your food prep over here, you can't see it from the stove if you're stuck, like, stirring a roux for 20 minutes. You can't see the TV from there. It's not a convenient placement. Got an office here, lots of bookshelves with 
not a single book on them. At least we've set the desk against a wall so we don't have any nightmare nest of wires sticking out. We've got a, a TV so we can keep track of the stonks. It's a little dollhouse for me, all the florals and the pink and the the gray color that they've chosen for this is, is a little kitschy. All of these knickknacks are kitschy. It's, it's just kind of, yeah, old lady dollhouse vibes. Oh, this is much, much, much too much. You know, we, we talked about that, that first time playing The Sims need to match everything to everything else. These, these curtains did not need to be the same pattern as the wallpaper. And the fact that they are is, is absolutely horrifying to me. What the fuck? I, even if the walls were a solid color, I would be like, these curtains with the matching valence and all of this is too much. Oh my god, they've got, they've got this little stool upholstered in the same fabric. They've got the dust ruffle and the pillows done in the same fabric. That's, please. Please, for the love of God, do not match your busy-ass wallpaper to literally everything in the room. Can you imagine trying to relax in here? This is so overly stimulating. We are in a different kitchen, so this might be the guest house, uh, but we do have, we have a hidden refrigerator. So we, at least in one of these houses, they know that you can't let them know you eat. You cannot let them know you eat because eating implies mortality. Uh, we've got a kitchen island that is not built in. It's it's a piece of furniture. It's a freestanding piece of furniture. And we do have stools at it. I think this is probably the guest house kitchen and the other one was the main house kitchen because this seems uh, smaller. Plenty of knickknacks up top. I believe that's a painting of a chicken. Uh, there's more chicken. Oh, oh, we've we've seen elephant people before. These are chicken people. Yeah. I've, oh my God, those are chickens. Oh my God, is everything chickens? I'm gonna lose my mind. Everything is chickens. We've got stacked ovens here and another oven here. How many ovens do people need, really? I mean, honestly, I like these details up here. I don't know how I feel about the curtains, but I do like the details up here. The can lights are atrocious, as always, but I've, I've, my eyes have started just glossing past them because I've come to expect that atrocity in every home. It's another chicken. It's another chicken on that carpet. We've got another angle. There's a chicken on the table. Why is there a chicken on the table? Uh, this, this is an interesting table, though. It's, I, I mean, the glass top on these two... I don't know what material that is. It looks like almost ceramic. It might be a polished painted wood. I like that. That's got some character and charm to it. It's it's a little quirky, but in a very deliberate way. Another view on the kitchen. And we can see that, yes, indeed, uh, at least two of these knickknacks atop this shelf over the stove are chickens. Good. Good to know. I was concerned that they might be not chickens. Oh, that one's a duck. I lied. That's a duck. All right, now we gotta we gotta really take a close look. We've got a a jar of pickled or preserved produce of some kind. That's the kind that you just have for decoration. You're never actually gonna open that and cook with it. I believe that's a chicken. That looks like I don't know a stack of balls, and this. This may also be a chicken. I don't know. Everything is starting to look like chickens. I just, if, I, if I'm if i unclear on what the shape is, I assume it's a chicken. Oh, we've got another chicken container in here. There's multiple chickens on the on the rug. There's, there's chickens in the corners too. We're in a little living room. I'm not clear on whether this is the main house or the guest house, but it seems kind of cozy in a way that I would associate with the guest house maybe. Got a few books on this bookshelf. It's not entirely barren of books, uh, but they also look like the kind of books that are just there for decoration. We've got an outdoor 
uh, eating and cooking space that looks like a, a pretty nice grill setup. I'm not much of a griller, but I, I that looks like a good one to me. It looks like we've got seashells on this table in case you forgot that we were near the ocean because you didn't sleep in the boat bed last night. And holy shit, look at this atrium. I'm assuming there's like a grand entrance below based on this chandelier. There's probably a foyer table with shit upon it here. Painted ceiling. That's some Sistine Chapel shit. I, wow. Man, that drug money pays well. Uh, we've got little insets with ornate vases in them. That's some Versailles bullshit. When did we let rich people stop being afraid of, of, of a repeat of the French Revolution? I think it's, it's been too long is the problem. They, they should be afraid to have this in their homes. That's what I think. Oh, this is an interesting twist on the foyer table. We have turned the foyer table into the world's most uncomfortable sitting space. Two chairs staring directly at each other across this tiny table. What do you think people do there? I, the only things I can imagine happening in this space is a, a staring competition, arm wrestling, someone trying to read the other person's mind. One of those therapy exercises where you gaze into someone's eyes for an extended period of time in order to engage empathy. You know, there there have been studies that show that the wealthy are, are extremely deficient in empathy uh, by and large. So maybe this is where they're practicing that. I also see even larger vases and even larger insets. And uh, I, again... They should be afraid. They should be afraid to do this. We've got a workout room with a little uh, snack bar. That's that's fun. You got a little mini fridge and a microwave. You know, fuel up in the middle of your workout. Uh, I'm not even sure what this machine is. It looks like maybe a multi-purpose of some sort. Um, but it looks like a good diversity of, of strength and cardio. Well, this is a very yellow room. Uh, we were talking about color theory and yellow engaging the appetite. Yellow has also been shown to increase anxiety, particularly in babies. Babies in yellow nurseries cry more uh, than those in other types of nursery, other colored nurseries. Um, I understand that adults are not babies, but I think we could probably probably apply that further and say it's not the best color for a bedroom. This bed frame is interesting. It looks like you've got some, some hand-painted details on there. It's unique, certainly. This is, it's, it's again very aggressively gendered and lots of little floral details. Oh, and now just to just to flip flop it around, we've got a really stern, dark office with again not very many books on the shelf. We've got two desks. We've got the desk where you sit, where you yell at the people that are sitting here, and then the desk where you actually work. These colors are so intense. Everything about the space is really intimidating. That the tassels on this velvet piece of furniture here. I mean, this is this is giving me politician vibes, especially considering that we are in Baltimore, which is DC adjacent. I'm thinking about in the Illinois house that that diplomat closet office. Uh, I'm, I'm getting that vibe here. This is a space intended to intimidate those that enter it. We've got an indoor movie theater because of course we do. It is sufficiently dark. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know what this image that they decided to put on the screen is about, uh, but go off. And again, the, the nautical theming. In case you had forgotten that we are by the ocean, in case you couldn't hear ocean sounds at all times from this property, uh, the bar is a boat. We got a TV over the bar so you can you can have some some sports balls. 
on, on the TV. We've got a, another identical cooking area here. Is it really necessary to have two outdoor seating areas of this sort? Are we hosting a simultaneous parties where we are we are grilling two different meals at the same time and hosting two different parties? And oh, I thought we were going to escape it. We just had to go outside to get to it. The TV over the fireplace, in the out of doors. This TV, can you imagine the humidity, first of all, the humidity of the ocean air, the spray when you've got like like a, an ocean storm, hurricane force winds coming in, battering this TV, and then you just boot up the fire to roast all of the moisture out of it. Good Lord. This one has to be re this one has to be replaced every six months. Normally, the TV over the fireplace is on an annual basis. This one is supremely fucked. Uh, outstanding, outstanding. Oh, and it is also it's opposite. It's opposite the TV over the boat bar. So you've got two. Why do you need two TVs? Is it so that you can put the same thing on both TVs in whichever way you decide to face? You don't have to deal with the agony of not watching the TV. All right, here's a nighttime shot of the pool. Uh, we could see the boat bar is, is in the pool house here. And we've got a billiards table. Man, they, they really held off on these, these rich people cliches until the last minute here. If your mansion doesn't have a billiards table, are you really rich? We also have shuffleboard, which is just a bonus. It's a bonus on the billiards table. Who actually plays shuffleboard? Answer me that. Do you Have you ever met an actual human being that plays shuffleboard on a regular basis? You haven't. You haven't. It's a made-up game that no one plays. Another view on the shuffleboard. This is a very dark space. I like the ceiling details, but in combination with everything else in here, it's... It's just too dark and stern. Oh my. Oh my, no, this is, this is far too much. We've got a, a mural painted on all of the walls of this bathroom with a peacock over the toilet. Two peacocks framing the toilet. This ornate sink, the, the gilt, the gilded mirror with the gilded oh my god no absolutely not and again the theming the theming is way too strong this is this is the bird room they've got the the trees on the bedpost which is kind of fun and interesting but is this a nest is this a nest over the middle of the bed i that seems first of all that's going to cast the most terrifying shadows on all of the walls, all of these are. These, this is just put on one one low light, try to relax and read a book before bed, and you have monsters on the walls. And then the birds, the birds everywhere. Oh, dear Lord. You've got more birds on the tiles in the bathroom for this room. This looks like a formal sitting room and the furniture symmetry is just off the charts look you could just draw a line down this room and it's all side to side almost perfectly symmetrical except for this and this in the corner uh, these benches symmetrical benches chairs even the coffee tables who does symmetrical coffee tables that is stupid that's absolutely stupid Oh, we've got some interesting stained glass details above these windows. I do really like that. I love stained glass. Those sorts of details can really make a space. But the uh, the furniture you've decided to fill the place with, stupid. Why don't these curtains continue? All, why don't they connect to the fireplace? Are we only covering two-thirds of the window? That's stupid. Here is our grand foyer. Uh, this, oh, this is the grand foyer. This is the chandelier. So that intimidating sitting area must be off center. Uh, and we do have a foyer table, but it's off center from 
the chandelier. This is a more traditional foyer table with shit upon it. Uh, a, a kajillion orchids, of course. And we've got a Greek vase theme kind of going on here. That's a seashell. Is this, I feel like this is an octopus. Like that's supposed to be an octopus under there. We're really leaning into the, the maritime theming. What is this? This is a bathroom. This is enormous. Can you admit this space has never been warm? You, uh, anytime that you get out of this bathtub, you are immediately a popsicle because this space is gigantic and it's got a marble floor and it's just in it's a huge ceiling. And we've got a bedroom that's way too big, so it needs its own seating area, which is also arranged in an intimidating fashion. These people love staring contests. They just gaze into each other's eyes and think murderous thoughts all the time. The the dome with the chandelier, that's okay in some rooms. In a bedroom, no, I'm gonna say that. It's not okay in a bedroom. That's a weird thing to have in here. We've got another Navigator Star detail. And it looks like we've got some more stained glass on this door over here. This is off of that main foyer area. And, oh, that stained glass leads through to the wine storage, which is on the main level. So I wonder how they do climate control in this room, or do they just let the, the wine roast? Because they don't actually know anything about wine, and they're just doing this for social pressure reasons. Uh, that's also definitely possible. Got a nice covered porch. It looks like these might be windows here, so it's like a three seasons room. I, you know what? I kind of like the arrangement of these chairs where you can have people just lounging and talking to each other, but not looking directly at each other. That's all right. I'm into that. Another outdoor space. I'm so confused about where they're fitting all of this outdoor space. Uh, this is a very intense fireplace uh i'm i don't know how i feel about it i i kind of like it it's it's a lot it's bordering on too much but it's also not something that i see very frequently and, and the fact that it's wide and, and short i'm i'm kind of into that I swear to God, we've seen this exact bird and flight statue in another house. I think that was Idaho. So they're mass marketing those and selling them. You know, I bet this comes from the same depot that sells the giant pears. Here we are on the ground level in that formal sitting room. We can see the details on that stained glass better. That is really beautiful. The chairs here, what the shit is going on with these? Oh, they're monogrammed. K with a little crown over it because we're no longer, I assume that K is for king. We've got laurels. We've got a crown. They are no longer even pretending that we are not in a monarchy, a feudal, aristocratic, totalitarian society. And also I see we've got some dead birds. Just lovely. Lovely. I, I cannot wait for the revolution to happen. Here's a wider view on that. And here is the house from afar. Well, I think it's fair to say that the opioid epidemic has uh, made some people very, very uh, comfortable and that those people need to be overthrown as soon as possible. Uh, this is just the definition of excess, of blue blood, of of the old money aristocracy, uh, not even pretending that that's not what it is, because there's there's no sense of irony. They're they're relishing in the performance of wealth, and uh, yeah, I've I've ended videos on this sentiment before, but guillotines. That's that's all we can do with a situation like this. Well, if you noticed anything that you think I missed, if you are from Maryland and uh, you know this particular breed of rich person and you've got something to share, uh, feel free to leave a comment, otherwise like, 
subscribe, and, uh, and have a good one.